So this happened six months ago, and you're probably wondering, why am I talking about a shooting that happened six months ago? I sort of knew something was out of place when I saw how the mainstream media was handling the story. For example, it looks like Dwayne Craig's name has been buried in the search results. Typically, if you type in a name in a search engine, especially on YouTube or Google, you should be finding Dwayne Craddock somewhere within the title of the video. And here you can see all the top videos, Dwayne Craddock. You can't find his name for several, several videos. They've buried it. So if anybody tries to make a video of this guy, Dwayne Craddock, and they put in their title, it's going to be buried really low in the search results. So... I wanted to take it a step further. I did a filter check. You put it for the past month, right? No results found. Ain't that something there, huh? Really what needs to happen is, you know, there's tons of footage of the shooting. They got to have video footage of how this went down. Has any of it been released to the public? To my knowledge, no. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because this story, the shooting, has so many implications for the future of America that some people in the city feel that nobody should have a gun, which is kind of crazy because criminals are always going to find a way to get a gun. I mean, this guy's an engineer. He could have built a gun. He could have built a bomb if he wanted to. He could have blown up the whole place. So it wouldn't have mattered. Uh, worried about rifles. I mean, he used pistols. Their end goal is to take the guns away from the people. You just wonder where that's going to go because that's just not going to sit well with a lot of people. You're going to have to take it from their dead hands. There was actually a sheriff that ran. He said, you got to take it from their dead hands. I guess that's what we're going to do. That's ridiculous, man. So this we are close to war well because there's still no motive and there's actually independent investigation going on that the families requested because the official story is just not adding up there's a lot of inconsistencies there's the preconceived notions that some people have but i can tell you uh dwayne craddock did not have a criminal record uh, he served in the national guard which i find ironic because now they want to send in the National Guard to take the guns away from people. There's a lot of other inconsistencies here. That Craddock, some people, you know, you've heard this before that people say, oh, I'd never think he could do something like that. We've heard that from a lot of these mass shooters. Now, I don't know if you believe in MK Ultra, but it's possible this guy could have been influenced somehow. Why would he put in a two-week resignation if he planned to go postal that day? And there's some other weird things, too. He was in the bathroom uh, brushing his teeth. And one of the guys came in, and he just talked normal like an everyday thing. And then that guy walked out. And then all of a sudden, he goes postal right after that. Just weird. Now, there's another inconsistency that really got me. Is it supposedly one of the ladies that he killed the night before she's talking with her husband she's like I'm really worried there's this guy that they had to take him out of there they fired him and he was threatening he was really threatening I feel like he's gonna try to come back and kill us and then the husband's like look I have a gun take my gun with you into your job just to be safe, you know, they don't have to know. And this is a gun-free zone, right? So everybody in there was pretty much defenseless. Well, guess what? It turns out that that person she was re referring to was not Craddock. It was another employee. And that happened the very next day. What are the odds that you have two people that could go postal the same day? Something is not adding up. They want to pass these crazy gun laws. Or they want to get rid of rifles. Well, he didn't use a rifle. I mean, he used pistols. I'm not saying that he didn't do it. But I'm just saying there's a lot of inconsistencies. 
And this is the reason why these families are wanting an investigation. And you can see Northam is using this as a springboard for the gun confiscations in Virginia, which could trigger a war. People in the country, why should we be subjected to these gun laws that are protected by the Second Amendment? Because some guy decides to go postal and it's a gun-free zone. You have to wonder here, the city, what are they covering up? This guy is an engineer. Some people are saying he's a Muslim. Uh, there's nothing online that I found that say that he's a Muslim. There was the accounts that people were using to find people. And a lot of profiles were made his name the day of the shooting or the day after. But when I looked at the 15 days before, there was a screen capture. It said nothing about religions in there. But look at this. I want her journals, her phone, her clothes. They're my wife's and I want them, he begged. So during this investigation, they refused to hand over her journal and her phone, which she was corresponding with her husband about the events that were unfolding. So he's not allowed to have them. What's on her phone? Also, the night before Kate was murdered on May 30th, she sat Jason down at the table and told him she wanted to take a gun to work because a disgruntled co-worker was being fired and was threatening. She said, Jason, I have an eerie feeling. We are letting this guy go and he's supposed to be police escorted out, Jason recalled. He has made comments he wants to shoot up the place. And I said, well, you can take my gun and put it in your purse. And if nothing happens, at least you'll be safe, he said. The co-worker didn't end up to be the shooter that took the lives of Kate and 11 others. But Kate's intuition of a faithful Friday rang true. I wish he had taken it. Maybe the outcome would have been different. I don't know what he said. So now Jason is turning his grief into go-getting. He has hired an attorney, Kevin Martingale, to call for an open investigation and release the personal records and documents that are related to the shooter. We want two things. The city can release all the shooter's employee personal complaints, behavioral issues, and other records that may indicate there is some concern about the shooter. The second thing the city could do is request that the attorney's general office or an outside law firm undertake an investigation and prepare a report, release a report in its entirety, to describe all the relevant events that precede the shooting during and after the shooting. So you have the attorney general. He's pushing for this gun control. Doesn't like these sanctuary cities that are being created. So he was actually in charge of this investigation. Now they have this independent investigation. It went out on a bid process. Now supposedly what they said is, well, we're not just going to take the lowest bid. We're going to take somebody we feel like can get the job done. But who is deciding? The city council, they pick whoever. So they say they don't won't have any influence on it but that's yet to be seen i try to look for latest updates from the independent investigation i haven't come across it yet so maybe they're just taking their sweet time with it but it's kind of crazy how they're, they're really quick to want to push all these gun measures and we don't even know the truth of what happened here what pushed this guy over the edge was there another shooter because look kate seems to think there was uh, somebody else that was about to do this the night before so what are the odds that you're going to have two shooters that work in the same place that go postal, you think, the same day in the same building, and they both work for the government? we seen this with Paddock. He was IRS. Paddock. Craddock. Freaking rhymes. There's just some weird things about this. And you can't let this go because maybe this whole thing is being used and was orchestrated to leave you defenseless. This is also really bizarre. Just moments before going on his shooting rampage, Craddock was spot brushing his teeth in the office restroom where he exchanged pleasantries with a colleague who wished him a good weekend. So why would he really care about brushing his teeth if he's about to do this crazy rampage where he probably knew he was going to die with the police? I guess he wanted his teeth to look pretty before he was dead. 
Joseph Scott, an engineering technician with the Department of Public Works, said he was in there brushing his teeth, which he always did after he ate. I said, hey, how you doing? What are you doing this weekend? It was just a brief conversation. I worked with him. He was what I thought a good person. And when we were together, we would talk about family, friends, and things that we're going to do, trips that we're going to go on. Something happened. It wasn't his nature. MK Ultra. So here's Dwayne Craddock's official resignation letter. He wants to officially put in his two weeks notice to vacate his position as an engineer. Looks like he was uh, considered a project manager with the city of the Virginia Beach. He says it was a pleasure to serve the city, but due to personal reasons, he must relieve his position. Dwayne Craddock was in charge of various projects and divvying out the money. And perhaps there's some finances that's going on with the Virginia City Beach and there could be money missing. I'm just saying, if I, if I was investigating the case, I would look into the finances because a lot of these projects that these people were working on are now backlogged and they say that a lot of the things won't be done for several years. Really interesting stuff like... I was reading that they're trying to make a new map to go along with climate change and to find out how that's going to be affecting the Virginia City Beach. And they said that's going to be delayed several years. So there's a lot of weird things that's going on. So if I was investigating this, I'd be looking into the finances. Could have maybe had something just made him crack because who knows, maybe that they were dipping into funds. I don't know who and maybe they just want to get rid of evidence. Who knows, maybe they're trying to knock out two birds with one stone. I could be way off on this, but I'm just taking a guess here. Just by reading a few things, I did read something that he was under pressure that last week. Maybe he made a mistake. Maybe they try to cover something. Exactly right, Todd. Pressure for this external independent investigation has been mounting by the day. You'll recall we've now heard from three different family members who lost loved ones in Building 2 on May 31st, as well as a local attorney hired by them that all say the same thing. They have the exact same sentiments, and that is the city should not be investigating its own self. Now, in a briefing this afternoon, City Auditor Lyndon Remia says he has studied, studied several reports from independent investigators investigators in high profile tragedies like San Bernardino, Charlottesville and Virginia Tech. And that's what this report should be modeled after. The auditor suggested proposals into this will be open from tomorrow until July the 12th. And then they would likely start the investigation in three to four weeks thereafter. Vice Mayor Jim Wood and the majority of council members said there should be a firewall between this investigation and city council. We, we need to have no hands at all on this, and, and frankly, the city doesn't need to have hands on this at all. Um, I don't think the state needs to. I, I think it needs to be a truly independent, uh, independent investigation. There needs to be no influence input at all from us, period. And the other... Once again, City Council will vote on that here at City Hall in just about an hour. They will also discuss surveying employees here of the Municipal Center anonymously to see how they feel about guns here in the workplace. Current HR policy here at the Government Center bars any city employee from bringing them here on campus, although the public is allowed to do so. Something else on the agenda this evening would be the future of Building 2. We're live in Virginia Beach. Chelsea Donovan, News 3.